If you told me a few years ago that you could simply plug in a 10 kilowatt hour home battery setup into your wall sockets, I probably wouldn't believe you. But here it is. This is the Sunpura S2400. And over the last few months, the price of this system has dropped significantly, which suddenly makes it a whole lot more interesting. Combine that with its sleek modern design, and that made me wonder if this could finally be a plug-in home battery that actually makes sense. So for today's video, I am unboxing and installing it, setting up the Sunpura app and sharing what it's actually like to use it in a real home. Hey, it's me, Martijn, and I test smart battery-powered products so you don't waste your money or time. So this is a hybrid plug-in home battery. Hybrid because it means it works in two different ways. You can charge it from a normal wall socket and you can plug solar panels directly into it. It has two separate solar inputs, each with its own smart controller that gets the most energy out of your panels, up to a thousand watts each. This also means you can connect panels facing different directions like east and west. The kit I have at home over here is a 9.6 kilowatt hour setup. One base station which houses the inverter, the safety systems and the smart controls and four 2.4 kilowatt hour live PO4 smart battery modules. Sunpura promises a 10 year warranty, around 8000 cycles, a P1 meter integration, dynamic tariff support, home assistant compatibility and even an off grid socket for backup power. It all looks great on paper, but the real question is over here, how does it behave once you install it into a normal household? Let's start with unboxing and then installing it. Each module comes with its own box with proper foam protection. The main unit has a clean glossy front with a full width LED bar that changes color depending on charging, discharging or standby states. The build quality feels super solid, the battery modules are heavy, the metal housing feels durable and the connectors are well protected with rubber caps. Included in the box are the AC cable, wall mount brackets, safety documentation and a quick start guide. Everything you need to get the system running is included. The design is definitely one of the better looking ones in this category. And that actually matters if you plan on placing the full 9.6 kilowatt hour stack inside your home. Sunpura uses live PO4 cells, which are known for thermal stability and long cycle life. The system also includes an internal aerosol fire suppression unit that is designed to activate if temperatures ever get dangerously high. And therefore there are a few important placement notes. First of all, keep it out of escape routes. Ensure proper ventilation around the stack, install a smoke detector above it, and lastly, use a dedicated electrical group if you plan to charge or discharge above roughly 800 watts continuously. And yes, it does have a vent. Under light loads, it stays quiet, but during longer high power sessions, it becomes clearly audible. Placement matters. Installing this 9.6 kilowatt hour setup, which is also the maximum this inverter can handle, is super easy and done in just a few single steps. First, you place the battery modules on a flat surface and remove the protective covers from the top and for the next one on the bottom as well. What I like about this stack is that you can mount it against the wall and they included all the brackets, bolts and screws. You stack the modules, then place the base unit on top where it locks into position. The next step is really important, so please pay attention. Each battery has its own power switch, as does the main unit. You turn them on from the bottom to top and off in reverse order. And the AC connection is as easy as plugging in the included cable. For solar, the unit offers two PV inputs with separate MPBTS supporting up to 100 volts each, which gives you more flexibility when wiring strings in parallel or series. And keep in mind, of course, you should not connect the panels when they are generating electricity. Please do so after or before sunset and sunrise. Now, basically, once you've done that, you're ready with the hardware and you can set up the app. Now it's time to grab your phone, install the Sunpura app from the App Store or Play Store, and then the real fun begins. You connect the device to Wi-Fi, give it a name, and it immediately starts reporting charge, discharge, grid import, PV production, and battery status. The dashboard is clean, the graphs are easy to understand, and everything updates quickly. 
I do want to mention that we also got the smart meter from Sempura and we installed this in the fuse box. I recommend getting someone who knows what they're doing if you really want to get the most out of your system. It's a small step, but it helps everything work exactly as intended. In my case, Sunpura detected the smart meter automatically and immediately started reading live data from the meter. And that's what allows the system to balance import and export extremely precisely, which is crucial for zero on the meter operation. And on top of that, the highlight for Dutch users over here is the seamless integration with the Home Wizard P1 smart meter. Now, let's get back to the app because that's where the real fun begins because Sunpura included four smart modes that you can choose from. Number one, zero on the meter. With this mode, the battery charges with the surplus coming from your solar panels and it discharges at night or whenever you need electricity from the grid. Using the smart meter data, the system can keep your net import extremely close to zero. Number two, AI smart mode. Now, this mode is where all the fun is because it combines dynamic tariff optimization to get the most out of your batteries and your money. It's charging when prices are low and discharging when prices are high with surplus solar energy management. At the moment, only a few providers are supported with barely any Dutch parties. So that's something to test later. Number three, manual schedule. Here you set fixed charge and discharge times with specific power levels. It works well, but the app could use more advanced options like per day schedules. Number four, smart plug mode. The last mode adjusts discharge power every two seconds to match a device connected to a smart plug. You can also add a standby baseline to cover your home's nightly base load. The app is simple and clean, but advanced users will wish for more customization. Some Pura says more settings are coming in the future, but as said by many, never buy something based on a promised future software update. Now, if you're a fan of Home Assistant, you're in luck. Home Assistant integration works for reading data such as state of charge, grid import, PV production and power flows. Full control like switching modes or pushing schedules is limited for now, but Sun Pura says, again, the next update will expand this. If you already run Home Assistant or plan to use it in the future, this system fits nicely into the ecosystem. And now it's time to see how the Sunpura performs in real day-to-day -day use. So running the system in self-consumption mode overnight, it basically kept the net import almost close to zero. In short, sharp spikes from appliances like the cooker or the microwave remain visible. No home battery can smooth those completely out, but overall power balancing was excellent. We also have to talk about RTE, round trip efficiency. So I disconnected all the solar panels. I tried to kept it for a long time running at 800 watts. And then you get a score. How much energy do you get into your batteries and then out? And that's different. And the difference is a percentage. And the higher the percentage, the better. Now, normally batteries around this price range score around 85%. And I did so with 82 to 84% because it's a bit difficult to keep it exactly at 800 watts nonstop for a long period of time. But for batteries in this price range, I think it's a pretty reasonable score. Thermals remained well within the expected ranges. Noise is low on their light load, but clearly audible during sustained high power charging or discharging. As you can hear, it's not meant for quiet rooms, but it's quiet enough to put it in your attic or in a shed or just maybe even in your garage. It's not bothering me that much. All right, it's almost time to wrap up the video, but before we do so, I want to discuss the pros and cons for the Sunpura system that's been running in our household for the last couple of weeks. So the positives. First of all, true plug and play with P1 integration. Hybrid system with a built-in PV inverter. Flexible solar wiring, modular up to 9.6 kilowatt hours, live PO4 batteries and a 10 year warranty, good efficiency and off the grid backup outlet. And of course, there are also a few things to keep in mind when considering this system. So first of all, the app is still limited for advanced users. Secondly, the van noise under heavy load is present. And lastly, the price per kilowatt hour is not the lowest in this segment, but still it's at a very attractive price right now. I will leave a link in the video description for you to check out after watching this video, because with some discounts, you can actually get it almost at the lowest price per kilowatt hour that's currently on the market available. So go check it out. Now, the last question, who's this for? The Sunpura S24 makes most sense if you want to have a modular system 
that's easy to install. But also, it integrates with Home Wizard and Home Assistant easily, lets you use both solar and grid charging without hiring an installer. It's also ideal if you want a system that can move with you to a new home later. It became much more affordable recently, but it remains less ideal if you're on a super strict budget or need total silence. If you want to see how the Sampira performs and compares to other plug and play batteries that I've tested here on the channel, then go watch this video over here. It's also a plug and play system that I actually also like a lot, but it's much more expensive. Uh, that's it for this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Go watch the video right now because we've reached the end. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So I'll see you in the next one.